In 1951, the Civil, the Civil Rights Congress drew up a 200-page petition to the United Nations in which they charged genocide. They charged genocide of the United States against African-American peoples, called We Charge Genocide, the historical petition of the United Nations for relief from a crime of the United States against the Negro people. I've got a copy of it in my Re Guerrilla Resource Library. I want to read you part of the preface by Ozzie Davis that he wrote in 1970, 20 years after the petition, petition was presented to the United Nations. This is not the first time black people of the United States have been issued a warning. W.B. Du Bois himself said it plain in 1900, the problem of the 20th century is a problem of the color line. We say it again now, we will submit no further to the brutal indignations being practiced against us. We will not be intimidated and most certainly not eliminated. We claim the ancient right of all peoples not only to survive unhindered, but also to practice as equals in man's inheritance here on earth. We fight to preserve ourselves, to see that the treasured ways of our life in common are not destroyed by brutal brutal men or heedless institutions. We charge genocide. Black men were brought to this country to serve an economy which needed our labor. And even when slavery was over, there was still a need for us in the American economy as cheap labor. We picked the cotton, dug the ditches, shined the shoes, swept the floors, hustled the baggage, washed the clothes, cleaned the toilets. We did the dirty work for all America. That was our place, the place where American economy needed us to be. And as long as we stayed in that place, there at the bottom, we were welcomed until we be loved and work in America. The murderer practiced against us was then partial and selected. A limited genocide meant not only to, 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 to exterminate us, America still had a job for us good niggas to do, as to warn us, to correct us, to use those of us who would not submit as examples of what could happen to the rest of us. Those who objected to being kept in their place at the bottom were beaten or killed for their uppity, for being uppity. Those who challenged our racist overlords, claiming for themselves and for us our rights as men and as citizens were burned for being insolent, lynched to teach us the rest always to stay in our place. But a revolution of profoundest importance is taking place in America. Every year, our econ economy produces more and more goods and services with fewer and fewer men. Hard, unskilled work, the kind nobody else wanted, that made us so welcome in America. The kind of work that we niggas have always done is fast disappearing. The point I'm getting is that for the first time, black labor is expendable. The American economy does not need it anymore. What will a racist society do to a subject population for which it no longer has any use? Will America in a sudden gush of reason, good conscience and common sense reorder her priorities, revamp her institutions, clean them of racism so that blacks and Puerto Ricans and American Indians and Mexicans Americans can be and will be fully meaningfully included of equal basis, we charge genocide, not only of the past, but of the future. And we swear it must not, it shall not, it will not happen to our people.